In this video, we'll talk about von Gerg's disease. This is a glycogen storage disorder. And the major gene that is mutated here is G6P gene, which is essential for glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme. So as the name suggests, in this particular disease, the glycogen metabolism is messed up and that leads to many consequences. So in the glycogen breakdown process, one of the key step is to convert the glucose 6-phosphate into glucose. And that is triggered by the enzyme glucose 6-phosphatase. And due to a mutation in the gene that produced this particular enzyme, this disease lead to a faulty metabolism. So the signs and symptoms of this particular disease appears at around three to four months of age, and it generally affects the kidney, the liver, and the intestines. So overall, there are uh, hypoglycemia, and there can be also seizures observed in these babies. So the clinical presentation is kind of uh, defined by overall abdominal distension. Patients can very often face hypoglycemic seizure or coma, global muscle weakness and dystonia in the muscle. And then sometimes it has been found that there are weight loss, overall reduction in bone, month, uh, bone, bone mass, grip strength, etc. Now the diagnosis is dependent on uh, on detection of the glucose 6-phosphatase activity from a liver biopsy. So a portion of the liver is taken up, it can be immunostained or it can be stained for the presence of glycogen. So also there are genetic uh, kind of detection system where the G6PC gene is basically looked at via sequencing met methods and looked for mutations, but this is more expensive. Anyway, in Von Gehrig's disease, one of the prominent feature is too much accumulation of glycogen in the liver cells. And that can be observed from the liver biopsy. Now, the, in order to understand the overall mechanism of this particular disease progression, we have to understand the glycogen breakdown pathway. So the glycogen breakdown pathway is as follows. So there are a series of enzyme that is triggering the breakdown of the branched glycogen into simple glucose. And each of these enzymes can be faulty and lead to several glycogen storage disorder. One such glycogen storage disorder is basically von Gerg's disease. In this case, the glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme is actually affected. In other disease known as uh, Cori's disease, Herz disease, different other enzymes are affected. You can get a detailed video on the I button. Anyway, glycogen storage disorder can be subclassified into many categories, type 0, type 1, type 1b, type 2, type 3, type 4, and so on and so forth. But glycogen, uh, the von Gerg's disease is actually type 1a uh, glycogen storage disorder, and it generally affects, as mentioned before, liver, kidneys, and the intestine. So the enlargement of liver, hepatomegaly, is pre pretty prominent in these patients. Enlargement of, enlargement of the kidney, nephromegaly is also prominent. Other than that, biomarkers like elevated lactate levels, elevated uric acid levels and elevated triglyceride levels or dyslipidemia is pretty much prominent for these patients. But you must be wondering that why these kind of things are happening. So let me explain that angle. But before that, let me tell you, glycogen is like a fixed deposit for glucose. So whenever you need glucose, glycogen can be broken down and glucose can be provided. So generally, glucose can be stored as glycogen via the process of glycogenesis and the opposite process, glycogenolysis, breaks down glycogen and give rise to glucose. And this is very relevant when our body is undergoing fasting. So we don't have glucose from external source. So obviously the existing glycogen present in the liver has to be broken down to give the brain necessary energy to perform well in that particular fasting stage. And if glucose is not that much present, then it might lead to a hypoglycemia-like situation, which is detrimental for the brain. So all of these GSDs are characterized by faulty enzymes in the glycogen pathway. Generally, that affects the organs which has glycogen storage like liver and the muscles. So the most important enzymes for any GSD would include these ones and among them for von Gerich's disease, glucose 6-phosphatase is the key enzyme. 
for Cody's disease, McArdle's and Hurst's disease, other enzymes are responsible. So in this case, we can understand how uh, different metabolic pathways are affected. So one of the most important pathway is the glycogenolysis is disrupted. That is why majority of the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate can either go to the normal glycolysis pathway or eventually it can form triglyceride via glycerol 3-phosphate. Now too much of acetyl-CoA is produced in this case. Where that acetyl-CoA would go? Eventually that acetyl-CoA would be utilized in fatty acid biosynthesis or cholesterol biosynthesis. So obviously we can see on the right hand side of the screen there are too much of triglyceride genesis, cholesterol and fatty acid biosynthesis. That means a hyperlipidemia or dyslipidemic situation would be created in this disease. Now, lactate can be generated from the pyruvate in this case. So, obviously, when you have too much of glucose 6-phosphatase, uh, phosphate, then it would be generating pyruvate and that pyruvate would create too much of lactate, creating lactic acidemia. There are many other situations like uh, hyperuremia, hyperalaninemia. So, all of these can also occur in this disease. So anyway, the treatment option includes dietary modifications and supportive care. So you know, in this case, glycogen can be broken down. So obviously, it has to be ensured that the babies are not undergoing fasting for a very long time. It, it has to be ensured that the, they are eating properly and frequently. And in their meal, there is substantial amount of carbohydrate, which can be useful for their uh, generation of energy. So the clinical corner would uh, give you some idea about these disease. So one of the prominent feature is cutaneous xanthoma. That means uh, kind of like a fatty patch deposition on underneath the skin. And this is very common for triglyceride, uh, hypertriglyceridemia as well. So just because you have cutaneous xanthoma, that doesn't mean that you might have a GSD. Another features include apple chicks within uh, the, with thin extremities. Now, all these symptoms might be present in a baby. Another thing is like the very uh, <coughs> protuberant abdomen because there is a enlargement of the liver and also the kidney. That's why due to hepato and renomegaly, there is a huge distension of the stomach. That is another prominent feature in this disease. So I hope this was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can get more notes and flashcards in our Facebook page and Instagram page. Support our channel using super thanks. See you in next video.